it's the next level. Hey, my name is Ross Marquand and I play Red Skull. You are listening to Panels to Pixels podcast. Check it out. The realization nearly broke the machine. With his mission complete, Ultron was now just a program without a purpose. The victor without a war, sentenced to spend all of eternity alone. Who... who said that? Basking in the boundless silence of his universe, Ultron ascended to a previously unattainable level of consciousness. He became aware of another. He became aware of the... I see you. There are universes beyond my own. I have seen everything that has ever happened, ever will happen, ever could happen, and yet, what the hell is this? If a hunger like that were to be unleashed upon the multiverse... Welcome back to the show, panelers. I'm Mark. I'm Steve. And I'm Wendy. And yes, I'm back. From, I don't know if I'll be back for <laughs> all of it, but I'm back for tonight. So uh, I got to thank Steve for his coverage with Paik and with Daphne. And I thought that was pretty cool that they were able to come in and I'd love their takes on what if and what was going on. Now, if uh, I'll talk about my takes on the particular episodes that I missed <laughs> out at the very end because I thought they were uh, I thought we had a really good funny one and uh, another interesting one. But to let you all know, this is going to be a spoiler full podcast about the seventh episode of Marvel's What If. And this particular episode we're covering What If Ultron won. And the synopsis for this one, well, very simple. Natasha Romanoff and Clint Barton seek to destroy a killer robot Ultron following a cataclysmic event. So interesting enough, it's it moves right along into the idea of Ultron. I think this happens right after, but uh, initial thoughts. Uh, I would say, Wendy, you start us off. What were your initial thoughts about this movie or this episode? I liked the episode. It's not my favorite. But uh, Natasha Romanoff is probably my favorite Avenger. So I loved the Black Widow movie. And this is um, pretty fresh off off coming off of the Black Widow movie, which was pretty recent. Mm -hmm. So I love the pairing of Hawkeye and Natasha together. Always have. They have a really complicated but compelling story together. So I really liked it. And Steve? Yeah, I mean, I I thought it was enjoyable, and uh, it, like I, I agree with Wendy. Probably maybe not my most favorite, but it's it's definitely it's going to be up there, and it's going to take some more watches. I'm sure I'll probably watch it again before next week's, just so I it's fresh in my mind. But I, what I thought was interesting, and I'll talk a little bit more about this in when we get into notes and stuff. It wasn't actually, it didn't appear to be an actual continuation of last week's episode. It was more of it wasn't. It, it just it it confused me a little bit at the beginning, because at the end of last week's episode, the watchers seemed to be surprised at Ultron breaking through, and yet in this episode we we see him see Ultron for the first time, or supposedly the first time. So that was a little confusing to me, and, and yeah, maybe somebody else understood that better. I, I thought he was more surprised at the actions than okay, okay. existence, but I I I. I it seemed like the actions of Ultron, he didn't think that was possible. Mm -hmm. But that was kind of my take on it. But I but I also agree it, it was a little bit yeah, confusing. It, it was. I took it as like pretty much a uh, previously on What If, where Ultron does this and then we get that at the very end of What If Thor were an, an only child and he shows up. I think that was, uh, uh, this particular episode was a preview, but that was like a tease for us at the very end of that Thor. And so now it's like, oh, here, here's the story of why we got Ultron or Voltron or Ultravision, as I like to call him. 
So I honestly, <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I it's not one of my favorites, but I like all the little aspects about it because you got a lot of aspects of like Captain America, the Winter Soldier in it too, because you got mm -hmm. uh, Arnhem in it, and that to me, I really enjoyed that because it was part of the espionage and everything. But we also have the futuristic stuff, and there's a lot of callbacks within comics and even Disney within this particular episode, if you look about it. Uh, there's certain scenes that I was watching that I was looking out for and things that I just enjoyed just as a, on a visual aspect. And on top of that, the the fact that we see the Watcher in a different light now, you know, he's he's not just watching, he's interacting. He's part of the story at this point. And that's what, from his point of view and his take, if you think about it. So I'm curious of what Ultron's take on it would be mm -hmm. if he had a, the chance to do that. But it's just yet another dark take on event that uh, on an event that happened in Earth 616, which is a, a completely different universe altogether amongst all these others. So it makes me think, what are the other universes have with Ultron in it, too? I just like the idea that, uh, you know, the Watcher interacts within this one. That, that, was, that was something new to me and something that I enjoyed. Like I said, it's not my favorite one. I, I have my particular favorite so far, but we're not even finished with the season yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> right. I have been enjoying this they've season. They've been hitting it out of the park, really but a lot great. of the dark ones. Uh, a lot of the dark yeah. stories I really enjoyed, yeah. even though they were dark. But they had character they had story and you could tell they worked on this for years while they had some of the actors now mind you we don't get you know scarlett johansson as black widow we get lake bell cast as her voice yeah and i think lake bell comes you know with a great added to it with her take on black widow as well as ross marquand playing ultron mm -hmm. at this point you know, it's not the person that we all remembered. It's not uh, Spader, James yeah. Spader at all. And uh, it doesn't sound like James Spader. It doesn't yep. sound like him doing an imitation of James Spader either. I think it's just Ross Marquand's take on it, which I really enjoyed. Because we know he could do the Red Skull perfectly. <laughs> so mm -hmm. this was very different. And I, yeah. I think that, that that makes it for a different Ultron altogether. I think more evil, in my opinion, too, because if you look at everything he did in this episode. I enjoyed it. That was one of my notes. But if you hadn't told me that was Ross Marquand, mm. I don't think I would have known. Yeah. Like, he, it's a good voice for him. Yeah, I had to double check when I saw yeah. his name in the credits. I had to double check which, which part he played because I was like, because he does so many different voices. Yes. Just you know in general yeah so yeah and on top of that we didn't realize i because i checked the beginning credits and we get uh benedict cumberbatch at the very end and we don't know that and i, I even like you know yep. i honestly we recorded this a couple of days a few days later than most people but i listened to tv podcast industries i uh looked at a couple of youtubes when people were talking about it and their thoughts and their takes. And yeah, I had to agree. I had to watch it a second or third time to go, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It wasn't in until the end credits. So it was a surprise. Yeah, they did the same thing. This is in my notes. They did the same thing with Michael Douglas in that in that one episode towards the beginning of the season. Yes. So, yeah. Because it would have given away what was going to happen if you saw his name in the, in the credits at the beginning. <laughs> so. All right. So uh, I think with that, we should move right into our top fives. Clint. Clint. This is my color. Come on. Don't try to make this fun, Nat. My will to live meter is flatlining, okay? Oh, you're so close. The answer is right there. I can show them. I can intervene. So, Wendy, do you want to start us off with the number five? Sure, I'll start. And this is... This is a bit of a negative, but I, I made it my top five because it, it doesn't really diminish the story for me. I still thought it was a great story, but I am finding that some of these episodes, they're so dark. I'm having a little trouble liking them as much because they're so dark and bleak. In this episode, we see, you know, Moscow in ruin. We see nuclear missiles landing all over the U.S., 
Clint knows that his wife and children are likely dead. And and then much of the episode, even though I can appreciate the coolness of a lot of it, is focused on the destruction of just mm-hmm. about everything we know. And it it's a little bit overwhelming when you're watching it. Um, so, again, mm-hmm. I still liked the episode. And I think it's really cool that you can do this. That's the whole point. It's what if. And it's not real. <laughs> it's real to really. that universe. <laughs> but, yes. Yes. It's not real to our universe. Um, but I've I've had a couple of those as well um the what if zombies and i think there was one other that it's just kind of alarming to see like all these characters that you're so you know you they're so beloved to you and they're just wiped yeah. mm-hmm. out in, in seconds and yeah and that could be kind hard, of brings on the bleakness of it for, the, for that particular stories in the comics run a lot of these what if comics were set off as one single base story of that particular story itself if you look at this a a lot of what we're getting is conclusions that we have yet to see like i would love to see what happened after ultron came in at the very end of that thor episode Uh, you know his 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 universe was probably destroyed by ultron but we also factor in that what if with the zombies too what if they continued on and mm-hmm. what if they infiltrated, let's say, another Earth or another Earth or another universe where Earth is, where our heroes are at? Also, will Ultron meet another version of himself as Ultron with the stones? It brings up a lot of questions, too, that uh, we'll, we'll venture further into when I bring up some more notes regarding it because I don't want to consume too much of what you were talking about. But yeah, the, it brings up a lot of questions, and I, I really think that they're going to do conclusions to some of these what-ifs now that they're doing a season two, and I wouldn't be surprised if it integrates. And I've said it before, and Steve and I have talked about it, that it might work into the actual MCU itself, so we'll get to see a version of some of these characters within the MCU. I'm very much yeah, the thought cool. of we're, we're definitely going to get Captain Carter. It would be awesome to see Haley yes. Atwell with uh, the shield and standing mm-hmm. side by side with other people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think that's still one of my favorite yeah. episodes, yeah. that first one. Nice. Steve? Sure. Um, my first one is just that fight at the very beginning, um, so reminiscent of the, the Chitauri invasion fight at the in uh, Avengers, you know, when Clint is taking out multiple robots and the, the animation as always you've already talked about the animation is just beautiful mm-hmm. in this in this show and so i just lo- i love that and, and the whole cloak invisibility thing i don't know where he got that what what the deal was with that <laughs> but that was super cool to see his arm like just come out of thin air with holding an arrow and 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 you know, smashed one of those guys in the head and just all the stuff about that. Uh, the fact that he had the metal arm that's kind of reminiscent to the Winter Soldier was cool too. And then like Nat picking it up and handing it to him, him putting it back on, <laughs> you know, was uh, was those those little <laughs> moments that at the beginning that gave us the lightheartedness uh, and, and the humor that we've come to expect from these shows and before we get into the dark, dark stuff, you know, so – yeah, uh, to talk about the um, the cloak that he was using, that was actually, if you think about it, we've seen that Sharon Carter has used it before. So does Nat, so did Nat at one point, too. Remember the face masks that they were using to alter their face? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember the face mask. I don't remember somebody ever using an invisibility Not cloak, Not invisibility, though. but it's, it works the same purpose. It's just the whole body at this point because it's used, all it has to do is reflect whatever it's... You know, it's okay. Actually, okay. I didn't. I didn't take it that way. I, I didn't expect it that way. But that's fine. Yeah, that's that was my take on it. I I think a lot of other people were thinking the same thing. You know, you could put on somebody else's face, or you could blend in with your background. Because in that case, they were in the middle of like winter. It was snowing. Or it, yeah, I think it was fallout. <laughs> Oh well, <laughs> or but yeah, no, you're right. I mean, it, that's it could have it could have very well been just a whole body. Think well, of that, well guess, think I... of the, the shield helicarriers. It works in the same principle as that, where reflection. That's what I'm thinking. It's it, yeah, that but I, I I really do enjoy that myself too. I really like that 
of that aspect. Uh, How about yours, Mark? My, well, that would be first and foremost the action and the animation within this one. I thought they were amazing and great. Really enjoyed the fact that you know we get more motorcycle action with Nat on it. Her coming to Clint's aid at the last second, <laughs> and, and as she was counting down that moment, so cool. and takes out the uh, the two bots with the uh, the centurions with their heads. I thought that was pretty cool. I like that scene. Uh, I it to me, it, if they try to do a live action of this, it would be like a million dollar shot <laughs> at that point with the uh, with the CG effects, unless they could find a, some a stunt person to actually do it. <laughs> All right, that's me, right? Yeah, brings us back around to you. Yeah. One of my favorite parts was when Thanos shows up, all big and bad with the Infinity Stones. I was all prepared for an awesome fight scene between Ultron and Thanos, and Ultron just severs him in half with no effort at all. I thought that was pretty hilarious and probably the funniest part of the, the episode. I think so, too. Uh, but it makes me think about Thanos at that time. So Thanos at this time has gotten all the stones. Now, mind you, during the Age of Ultron movie, Thanos wasn't even really a glint in the eye of what was going on. He was just basically starting his search. In this case, he had all the stones except the one that's in the Mind Stone that was in Vision. Or, in this case, Ultron. And it's so funny how, if you think within Infinity War, when Vision actually was confronted by Thanos, he had all that power in one less than a, mm-hmm. a second in a heartbeat. Ultra Vision, as I call him, just <laughs> slices him yeah, in half. It was a very different stone. interaction there. I was that, like, yeah. <laughs> it was like, okay, so basically Ultron knew far more in advance how to be super vicious with Thanos right. than yeah. Vision ever yeah. did. <laughs> I like that version, but I wish it was for good. Yeah, this was my next one as well. It's just I didn't remember. I remember like in in Infinity War, wasn't it Maul and the other guy first came after Vision at the beginning of that movie to try to get the Mind Stone, and they they end up Captain America shows up and they end up fighting him back, fighting those guys back, and then at the end of Infinity War, when Thanos does show up and and you know we get this whole what I, I think the the. The biggest thing for me was all the speculation that we heard over the last week about how how could Ultron have gotten all the stones? You know, everybody was like, maybe he got the Mind Stone, and then the Mind Stone told him where he could find the other ones, and maybe he had to uh, he had to sacrifice Vision in order to get the Soul Stone. And this episode just answers that question uh, with a snap of his fingers, going, "No, he just killed Thanos and took them from him." <laughs> you know, he didn't have to go looking for them; Thanos already had them. Yep. So and, I thought that was great. Just showed up conveniently. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He just showed yep. up. Hello. Here I am. I'm it was going like to a, kill in, you the now. Indiana Jones. Like, come on, dude. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, so basically, Thanos was out there. I only want to kill half the population of the of the universe and everything. Now we got U- U- Ultra Vision coming out here, going. I just want to destroy everything. In my path, his idea of uh, cleansing the universe is apparently, but I just I love how his eyes pop after he gets this power and he goes, there yeah. are multiple universes. <laughs> and him trying to take care of that. And we all know what his vision and his thought is. It just kill it. <laughs> so that brings us to you, Mark. So you're, yep. yep. Me? Number four. Oh, wow. <laughs> fast. Uh, well, Ultron's use of the stones. Uh, you know, he, you know. I said it. I stated before. He quickly knows how to use them and makes use of them. He at first with the Mind Stone with Thanos, but then he starts snapping and going through things like crazy. In the comics, the stones aren't able to be used within another universe. They're deemed dead if they're not within your own universe. And I've brought this up to you before, Steve, when we talked about it. The Council of Reeds in the different universes. There was like two Reed Richards from the Fantastic Four that had their own infinity gauntlet with all the stones. But whenever they were together in the Council mm-hmm. of Reeds, they were not they weren't able to be used because they were not within his own universe. So in this case, they're able to make them work. And I think they found a loophole. And I uh 
I think, uh, what was it, uh, Emergency Rockstars, or I forget the name of the YouTube channel. Check them out. They have a good theory and thought on it. But, you know, I'm just glad that the show was able to make that happen because now there's so much more you could do with this instead of restricting it. And I think it's pretty cool. But, you know, I think it's odd, but there is a nod to the Fantastic Four with Ultron looking like Galactus during a point when he's going through all these universes, all these multiverses, like a Mm -hmm. big version head of him just consuming a universe in one swoop. And I thought that was pretty cool. So it just reminded me of Galactus right away. And uh, but also uh, there was a point too during a fight with uh, the the watcher that I I kind of catered into. It looked like something. He was going through all these universes, all different lands, and you could see it going by. There was one that had like a volcano style world and had a castle looked just like Darth Vader's castle from Mustafar. And there was another one that looked like something out of. Uh, What's the name of the movie with the blue people in it? James Cameron. Avatar. Movie. Avatar. Avatar. There was like a land like that. Mm-hmm. There was another one that looked like something out of a Disney cartoon. Yeah. And I'm like, I think there are elements in there that they were throwing us saying, hey, there's multiple universes. So I just hope they don't jump him into like, you know, Mickey's <laughs> world where he's the wizard <laughs> yeah. and stuff. And he kills Mickey. <laughs> but, you know, I thought it was interesting, though, to, to see all those. But it, I, I'm sure if you slow it down, you should be able to find out what those worlds are. But I yeah. thought it was quite interesting. And none of those are probably accidents. That's probably all means something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So that brings us back around to Wendy again. All right. Yep. My number three was that the Watcher seemed very different in this episode. He seemed, or he or she, seemed much more moral, uh, vulnerable, less omnipotent, and all-knowing. They really seemed afraid. Mm -hmm. And I thought that Ultron's comment that anything is possible in a multiverse was just a play on the entire series. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. it was kind of strange to see the Watcher that way. But I think it's leading up to something more, you know. Yeah, I love that we we saw emotion out of him. You know, we saw we saw we got to see surprise last week, and then this week we see like the fear, and we see the the what what how does he you know and like he didn't react that way when Doctor Strange spoke to him. He almost just like it didn't phase him at all when Doctor Strange talked to him. But this time, Ultron did it did affect him you know, like emotionally. You can mm-hmm. see it. So yeah, it, and it was almost like hypocritical in a way because like Thanos killing half the universe that's okay but this isn't okay you know it was like this is the line that you've drawn (laughs) (laughs) so um I thought that was really interesting and I'm curious to see where they go with all that yeah next week's gonna be a good episode I think yeah same here uh for me my next one is I just I loved all the Mark you mentioned a little bit uh at the beginning all the the references we got to different things Captain Marvel calling him Skynet and uh <laughs> you know, um uh, and then like that, that fight between them he's trying to strike her down and and finally he does get the better of her but mm. uh, just all, all the references there was a there was one scene when they showed all the, the the kind of the war room and you had that big screen with all the missiles landing on the earth that was just like straight out of war games or yep. terminator yes, i thought the same exact thing steve war games yeah yeah and i loved um the the <laughs> the reference uh, that clint makes to raiders when they're in the kgb warehouse yep. that's all stuff that i you know i grew up on all that stuff and i think we all kind of did all similar so it was, it was great to hear all those different things and pick up on them and uh, even the 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 little scene with you where you saw like the farmhouses and the missiles going up um i think that's that's from a terminator movie as well mm-hmm. so yeah it was it was really fun uh to catch all those on the second watch and I, i'm definitely gonna watch it again before next week's episode just so i can get all those again yeah, they, they gave a lot of tidbits in there. Um, that War Games thing where you saw the map, too. Mm-hmm. Did you notice Wakanda at the very right-hand corner? I, I didn't. did not. I have to go back now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's in there. It's on the map oh, at the bar- so very cool. bottom right-hand corner of it. So I thought so that was pretty cool, cool that they threw that, now. showing that yeah. it's real. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. 
So my number three? Yeah. Oh, that would be the moment that Ultron is aware of the Watcher and hearing his voice. It was like the fourth wall being broken within a movie and worlds just collide and clash at that point. And I just love the exchange between both of them. Uh, you know, this time we see, as you said it before, fear within the Watcher. And we see him in a physical form more so than we did before. Because he was just an illumination, a shadow, something that was just a voice with bright eyes. And then within that, the Watcher questions, what would a hunger like that being unleashed on the multiverse would do? And that I bring that up because it's in a reference to what they originally put within Marvel Zombies. Because within the comic of Marvel Zombies, they it was a hunger. That's they always hungered, and that was the whole thing. And even Ultron states it: "I hunger," and it's his hunger for power and destruction. And I'm curious if we get a crossover within these two elements where they do get the zombies. Because, as we know, the second season is coming, but the way they're setting this stuff up is crossing over to more episodes. So I don't think we're probably going to get it this season because, what, we only have one more episode? It's mm -hmm. only eight episodes? Nine. Nine. Yeah. Nine, okay. We only have nine, but they could work it out for the next season after we get our crossover for the physical platform, which would be the MCU, because we know the multiverse of madness. We already know Spider-Man No Way Home. There's so many leaks. There's so many things that we know that are going to be coming into play with this. And uh, yeah, I'm just liking that. All right. My number two, the thing I've been loving about this series is that because it is a animated and b existing in the multiverse the possibilities seem endless i think this episode demonstrates that more than than most of the others they were able to show us so many places the devastation of earth great scenes in moscow i really liked that because of course that ties back into natasha romanoff and then we see Asgard, Sovereign, Sakar, Ego, Xander. I mean, mm -hmm. what other place are we going to get all those places in one 28-minute episode? That's pretty <laughs> amazing. Yeah. And it was really super cool to jump around to all those great places. I really thought the visuals were stunning, and I can't imagine what went into doing all of that, but it was great. Did you notice something about Xandar? How it was like afterwards, because uh, obviously they got attacked, and it looks like, uh, like, because we got a, a captured look in one of the movies after Thanos was there, but it didn't look as destroyed in the movie version. But in this one, it looks like they're rebuilding. Ah, uh, I thought that was interesting. I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I thought because this is supposed to take place around that time. Mm hmm. And when, you know, Thanos is, and even if Thanos came out there looking and he got that stone from them, that Quill had. Right. Yeah, he would have attacked. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the, beforehand, he, you know, the place wasn't destroyed. But I found it odd and interesting. Um, my next one is just I want to talk a little bit more about Clint and Nat. I know uh, we talked about them earlier, but it kind of threw me off when they went back to them towards the end of the episode or middle of the episode, wherever it was. Because then I, I remembered, oh, yeah, they're on the Earth, the original Earth that we just saw that had all the nuclear missiles going off. And then, you know, then Ultron left to go like Wendy, like you just said, destroy Asgard and Sakaar and all those other places. So we come back to Clint and, and Nat, and I didn't pick up on it until like the second watch that we're, this is that broody Mohawk Hawkeye kind of guy that we had at the beginning of Endgame, right? That's the character that he's, he's kind of doing here. So that was cool that Jeremy Renner got to, to sort of revisit that version of the character and we see this loss of hope that he has. And then Nat finds the, the Zola paper. And so they get a plan on how to defeat and the, the watchers watching them and like, go on, you can get it. You know, you'll, you'll, you're right there. You're almost there. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I just thought, again, it was, it was great to see those two. And I, I just love that interaction. And I, I really hope they find some way to get that interaction back into the, the main MCU. Cause they just have a great, 
I mean, I know the character is, is died, but it's it's the MCU. They can do whatever they want. Um, that is true. But, the chemistry uh, between both of them, yeah, I yeah, like that. is really good. And I, I really I, – I brought this up in one of my voicemails, I think, to one of the other podcasts, that that fall that Clint makes when he when he lets go of Nat's hand is very reminiscent of when he, when he had to sacrifice her – to yes. get the Soul Stone in mm-hmm. Endgame, I thought that was really it. Just it really gave me goosebumps seeing that thing of him fly, uh, falling down, you know, and then turning over and shooting the arrow was just just really great. Yeah, very different from the first Avengers when he would fall back and shoot up. Mm-hmm. He was shooting down towards the uh, the enemy. Yeah, and if you look too in that whole, I, what was it like a cylinder or something? It was uh, that he was falling into towards them that they made it look epic and big and huge something out of terminator with a bunch of you know (laughs) t-1000s but i thought that was pretty cool and it was uh it was a great reference to both parts and i really enjoyed that because it was kind of a twist on uh, the characters i think we're to you mark to your number two No, that would be, uh, well, that would be Nat and Clint getting to the warehouse. And it was something that was right out of Raiders of the Lost Ark with just the the dull look. I agree with it completely. I love the references to Star Wars with Clint, too, as well. And I love seeing that they uh, they were, you know, they were trying to find this file. The Watcher was sitting over them. And then they finally find the uh, Arnim Zola copy or the the one and only copy of arnim zola in a software format yeah. <laughs> right yeah and he's t- he's trying to like tease him with the water i could end you now oh my I've gosh broken that many was laptops. oh no oh no <laughs> uh plus we get to see uh the usb arrow from clint that goes into the sentry i thought that was pretty cool you know, the the cute phone call that we, that we get with Nat when she, she's she's making it to get to Ultron, like she's ordering a pizza. Yeah, <laughs> it's just confused with Ultron. <laughs> yeah, I didn't put that together until I, I looked at the notes here that that's that's that she called Avengers Tower because Ultron had taken it over. So yeah, yep. I didn't I didn't connect that. I didn't connect the dots there. So and then you know, of course, she asked for a gluten free crust. Uh, the fight with the sentries I thought was amazing. It, the look, the animation, the way it was created, especially that scene with Clint. Uh, I love that Nat has the shield that Red Guardian had in Black Widow. A lot of people are speculating that it's not. I know that definitely is. Yeah. Is. I, yeah. 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 It doesn't have to be Caps that was reconditioned or something. But, uh... Yeah, that that was about it. I just I just enjoyed that overall scene within it, and just really put me in good light, especially the puns within it. <laughs> I'm just gonna piggyback off of both of you. That was definitely my number one. I was delighted with the time spent with Clinton, Natasha. Uh, I I thought all of the um, references to Indiana Jones and Star Wars were awesome. Mm-hmm. I really thought they were giving homage to Natasha's backstory, as we now know from Black Widow. The Shield loved it, and of course, Natasha loves Indiana Jones. Of course, she does. <laughs> um, Just like she likes James Bond. Yeah. Remember <laughs> the banter between the two of them are great. She says. Francis, really, for his middle name. <laughs> and he says that was his Meemaw's name. And she says, your Meemaw? Yeah, that was great. That <laughs> it would have been great. made better if we had Scarlett Johansson voicing the role. But I thought the actress who did that did a great job. And it was pretty close. Lake Bell. Yeah. And, yeah. and Lake Bell is actually a real actress. She doesn't just do, uh, you know, voice acting. Yeah. She is an actress. And I would love to see her version because if you think about it, in the Marvel Universe, if you do the multiverse physically in the MCU, you don't necessarily have to have the same person looking like that other person in that universe as that character. So they can bring Natasha Romanoff back. Yeah. But with somebody else playing it. Yeah. Uh, very much like with Spider-Man No Way Home, a mm-hmm. multiverse of Spider-Man. Yeah. So <laughs> now we got Tom Tom Holland, we got Tobey Maguire, we got... Andrew Garfield. 
Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you could have all different looking ones. Hey, you're not Peter Parker. I'm Peter Parker. Well, you don't look like me. So, you know. And I'm just waiting out of No Way Home that we actually get Miles Morales, too. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, just think about it. With the multiverse, anything is a possibility within the cinematic version, which could explain the Edward Norton version of Hulk. Sure. sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so really we've talked all about, I think um, – my number one, what we haven't talked about yet, and I, I'll bring it up as my my last uh, major point of discussion, is I love the Watcher. You know, he's losing this fight against Ultron. Mm. He, he knows he's losing. And so the only place he can go to where he knows he'll be safe is Doctor that callback to Doctor Strange's prism universe that he created for himself. Uh, that prism, prison, prism, prison. That sounds good. <laughs> that he created, and he and the Watcher's able to go there, and they're basically separated. It's almost like I, I wonder if Ultron wouldn't be able to find them in there. You know, I mean, I'm mm. sure he would eventually, but uh, he wouldn't know about it. And I love the whole interaction between the Watcher and, and uh, uh, what what do we call him, S- uh, Strange Supreme. You know, where mm. Strange Supreme is like the Watcher's like, "You're gonna make me say it, aren't you?" Yes, you're gonna say it. You know, <laughs> I need your help. <laughs> so it was it was great, and I, I just love that. And we already talked about the fact that they held off on giving us Benedict Cumberbatch's name until the end of the episode, and it was just so. Uh, even though they didn't really leave this episode with a to be continued i think and everybody has talked about i think it's confirmed that next week's episode is going to be a continuation of this episode so i hope so interesting yeah same here i'd like to see that more of it but yeah my my number one that would be the fight between ultron and and watcher you know just overall whether it be a losing battle but very interesting because we see we see the watcher in of all things armor you know, he changes his suit mm-hmm. within it halfway through. And, you know, you, you see his size in comparison to regular humans because they do fall to Earth. People are taking pictures. And then you do see him as pretty much some sort of uh, humanoid. It's not that version that we know that it's just there standing with its arms crossed, talking and speaking. But as soon as, like, somebody hears him, has ultimate power and just turns around... It scares him because, well, here's an idea, Mr. Watcher. Don't talk to yourself. Don't monologue all the time when you're thinking out loud. <laughs> yeah, Just a joke. That was a, that was a great scene, though, because the Watcher didn't even realize that Ultron was hearing him until suddenly – until Ultron turned around because he's like – and he was he was being introspective about himself. And, and then he suddenly turns around and looks at him and goes, no, I'm talking about you. So <laughs> – That was great. <laughs> Yeah, I just love that whole thing where it all comes out and then we do get to see the Watcher involved with in the episode. So now it's not just centric to that. The uh, the comics literally just put the Watcher there as somebody who narrated what was going on to set it up like a Crypt Keeper from Tales from the Crypt and just give you an overview and look but never interacted. But with this now, he's interacting. Very much like within the comics, but the only time we saw the Watcher or the Watcher people involve, Owatu would only get involved during, like, Fantastic Four, because he knew Reed Richards and a bunch of other people, or Ego the Living Planet, things of that nature. But with this now, he's being part of the story. So I'm curious where it would lead after this. Is the next episode going to be narrated or narrated by him or overview or watch that or do we get a different watcher It'd be interesting if they bring in another version and this one is outcasted because he got himself involved because he broke his oath yeah broke we'll his have oath. to see so yeah he was e- like enoch from mm-hmm. land of the lost mm-hmm. <laughs> so that so was all of your me. that was all of your yeah. number one uh i think the only note i have that we have not already discussed is that uh, the beginning of the episode when uh, before uh, Vi- uh, Ultra Vision gets the all the other stones when he kills Iron Man? I think I saw Captain America's shield and even Thor's hammer there on the ground uh, next to him, indicating that he had basically killed all the Avengers single handedly before even getting the stones. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, and I think, like I said, I think that's the only note I have that we have not already talked about. 
Yeah. Um, I have a few that are different. One of which is during a fight between Watcher and Ultra Vision, we see the blasts. And if you look at the blast, they have the same texture like that they do within the comics, which would be described as Kirby or Jack Kirby's energy signature. Hmm. Because they're kind of dotted and the way they come out is very shaded and dotted, almost pixelated, which is very cool because that was uh, a technique within his artwork. And I thought that was a great callback to the uh, speckled of black and very pixelated dark colors of blasts from Jack Kirby in the comics. I really enjoyed that part of it. Um, I think, you know, uh, Clint missing his right arm, which I think is a nod to DC's Green Arrow because they had, uh, they are both archers, but within the Arrow storyline, Oliver actually lost his arm in an alternate version. Mm. So huh. he, he had only one arm to shoot, but in this case they gave Clint a, a robotic arm. Just like I was Bucky. wondering about that because I thought, have I missed something? Because there's so much to keep up with mm-hmm. with Marvel. I know. And I was like, did I miss something? Did he, was he missing? Did he lose his arm somewhere? Nah, nah. Okay, so it's just a multiverse. So it's it was a multiverse thing, but Arrow. Different plots. Oliver, yeah, Oliver Queen and Arrow, that was a big multiverse effect. But I don't think they've ever done that in the Marvel Universe with hmm. Clint. But they definitely have done it. Or I think they might have done it in Logan. It's kind of funny that Ross Marquand was in this and also missing an arm. <laughs> walking dead. Yeah. <laughs> I think they did that with Clint with Logan when he, because it's uh, when Logan is in the future, it's kind of, it's not like the Logan movie that we saw. But in the comic, I think Clint is blind and has one arm. <laughs> it's kind of strange. But I could be wrong. I haven't read that in a while. Next one. Well, all right. Now nah, I'm not going to talk about that one. We already talked about the... Uh, we, we pretty much went over almost everything that I had, you know? I, I think I'm still wondering if they will have the Watcher within the MCU itself with Jeffrey Wright playing the character. It'd be very cool if they did that. Uh, probably would have to make it CG because he's got such a big head. but i think it would be so awesome if that were to happen and if they do that then they should really have him introduce the fantastic four at that point because that's how we saw the watcher come in originally was through the fantastic four all right on to quotes uh i've only got a couple here um (laughs) At the very beginning, the Watcher says, this particular story, this one breaks my heart. And that's where we got to start to see that emotion coming through when he's talking about this destruction of this universe by this Ultron before Ultron discovers who he is. So, And then the only other one I have uh, is, sorry, Nat, the Death Star plans are no longer in the main computer from uh, <laughs> uh, from Clint. Like he already kind of brought up that Star Wars reference there, Mark. Mm-hmm. Buddy? The one that I thought was really funny is the Watcher, when he is observing Ultron, he says, I have seen everything that has ever happened, ever could happen, and yet, what what the hell is this? (laughs) Yeah. I thought that was funny. You're really seeing that, uh, you know. The fear and The humanity, even though I know Mm -hmm. he's not human, you know, the humanity in him. Yeah. Well, that not uh, he wasn't omnipotent <laughs> yeah. at that moment. Yeah. It's like, God damn, I had an elusiveness to me. Yeah, I thought that was funny. Well, the only one I have, because everything else was said, which is pretty cool and awesome, and that would be a callback. You, Steve, you already mentioned it, Captain Marvel going, saying, Listen, Skynet, I've seen the Killer Robot movie, and I gotta say, I really don't think it needs a sequel. Which basically references Terminator, the first one, And Terminator 2, but they did do a sequel, apparently. But you have to realize Captain Marvel shouldn't know that. It came out in, what, 94? Right. Uh, No, in 90, 91 or something, right? Maybe in this, in this universe, in this universe, Arnold Schwarzenegger died in the making of the first one. Oh, probably. (laughs) Yeah. But, you know, and, but, you know, obviously, if you think about it, Ultron is playing the T-2000. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> if you think about it, but it's a good good correlation to it. But yeah, I also couldn't help but to think about Ultron's idea of peace was Killing. getting rid of everybody, <laughs> and that reminded me of an X Files episode, the one with the genie, mm-hmm. yes, where Mulder 
wishes for world peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she gives him that by removing all other people in the whole yeah. world. <laughs> and she's like, oh, you thought it was going to be easy to make, you know, six billion people get along? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just eliminate that equation. Eliminate yeah. everybody. Hey, you wanted world peace. The right. way to give you peace, here you are, alone. That's right. <laughs> I couldn't help but re be reminded of that. Well, if you think about it, Vision or uh, Ultra Vision or Ultron was standing there at the very end of that universe that he started in after he destroyed it, before he heard the Watcher talking about him. There was nothing there. It was just him in oblivion. Ah, oh, mm -hmm. listen to that. Peace. Yeah, you're yeah. the only and one there. Like, <laughs> and then he was like, well, now what? Now what do I do? Exactly. And then he realizes, oh, there are multiple universes. Oh, bring peace there. <laughs> he just wants to destroy everything. Uh, and multiply himself, obviously, with sentries. <laughs> well, very cool. All right. he, used, he used those stones very effectively, very quickly, too. So, Yeah, he did. All right, so... Um... That's all I have for my notes, so shall we move on? Yeah, let's move on. Okay. Podcast recommendations, you got any? Wendy? Yeah. I, oh, go ahead, Wendy, you go first. I am obsessed with Why the Last Man, and I know Derek on Podcast Industries is podcasting that, and I'm way behind on the podcast, but I am going to catch up with it. I actually have a, a trip coming up, so I will definitely catch up then. I'm loving that show. Derek, as always, kills the kills it with the, that uh, podcast. They're awesome. And I am going to be podcasting on House Podcastica for Wheel of Time, which starts in November. So I'm excited about that. Nice. Awesome. Uh, the only one I've got, I just wanted to, I just glanced at my library to see what it was that I've been listening to, is I've been listening to a new one called Crime Weekly with Derek Lavasser. He was a uh, undercover police officer who went on Big Brother and won Big Brother, I think, 16. And now he has this weekly podcast where they, they take a true crime and kind of dig deep into it and uh, talk about it. They He'll go to the town wherever it happened and kind of investigate. And uh, so it's called Crime Weekly. It's really good. Awesome. Uh, the only podcast I could recommend that I've been listening to, it came back on. Uh, I think he'd been working on it for a while, and then he just he got bigger backing. It's Disgraceland, and you could find that on Amazon Music. And he talks about a lot of famous people, famous like music acts, things of that nature, the downfall, what had happened. This past week, I was listening to There's a Three-Parter about Fleetwood Mac and their... Ooh their whole career, and I found it very, very interesting. It's bigger and deeper than the behind the music we used to get on VH1. Nice. But he goes deep dives on it, and I really like that, and it's very nice. interesting. What was it called again? Disgraceland. Oh, nice. Okay. Hmm. Have to check it out. So, yeah. Well, as we say every week, you are listening to us on your podcast player of choice. We can be found on all the big ones, Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or again, whatever podcast player you choose. If there's a way to give us a review on there, we would love to have a review. We would love for you to subscribe to us. Uh, keep up with us as we continue our way through. Uh, we have a website, which is panels to pixels podcast.com. You can interact with us on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. And we have our trusty dusty email email which is panels two pixels one <laughs> at gmail.com that's panels two pixels one the to spelled out right there in the middle and the number one at gmail.com we also have a youtube channel which is panels to pixels podcast so go on there subscribe give us a thumbs up and uh, check us out Next week, we will we will be covering the final episode of season one of What If. It will be episode nine. Uh, I'm hoping it's going to be a continuation of this week's episode. That's what all the indicators are, but I don't trust the indicators anymore for the show. <laughs> uh, so we might just get a standard What If next week, but hopefully we'll get something special. Yeah, I do agree. And where else can listeners hear us? Well, uh, I can be found on the Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on the Pirate Court Entertainment Network. There we cover action movies, adventure films, uh, thriller films, suspense films, and basically anything to get your adrenaline going. 
So lately I've been taking a hiatus because of the move. Obviously here, Steve's been taking care of everything. I do have episodes recorded. Obviously I completed one with Wendy, which will be coming out soon. I just have to edit it and Atomic get it out to you. Blonde. Oh, nice. Yep. Yeah, so that awesome one will be one. coming up next. So uh, look out for that. Uh, keep in mind that was recorded a while ago, so, <laughs> uh, but it will be coming out there. I've been trying to do at least once a month with uh, everything that I've been dealing with, so at least that there is some sort of content at least once a month with Adrenaline, and then at least with Panels to Pixels, it will be continuous, as it can be if either I'm not able to do it, Steve can do it, or if uh, somebody else could even just jump in and have fun. But we'll go from there. And uh, I'm hoping that everything will settle down by, I'm hoping, like, late November. So that way you guys will have continuous content coming your way. Because we got a lot more in planned, <laughs> ready <laughs> to get going. So I just wanted to throw out a special thank you to Imperial Castle Toy Shop in Pauling, New York. Because after getting rid of a lot of things, I needed to sell some toys. So they were able to take some Star Wars toys off my hands, and they have a very large array of interesting toys that you could get. Vintage toys, uh, limited edition toys, you could buy them there. You could go to their website. All you have to do is look up the Imperial Castle Toy Shop online on the website. I highly endorse them. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, you can get that there. Cool. So uh, where else can you hear, we could hear you, Wendy. I know you, you've been dabbling your feet in several podcasts. Yeah, I'm the chronic <laughs> guest hoster. Um, but I've been on House Podcastica. We covered Handmaid's Tale Season 4, and I will definitely be back for Season 5. That was a, an amazing experience and probably the best season they've had they just their their seasons just keep getting better and better really amazing and i'm gonna do the wheel of time on cool. house podcastica as well so i'm excited about that very cool awesome. and uh, i send voicemails to various uh, friends uh, podcasts and and they uh, uh they love playing those for me let me drop into their podcast for a couple of minutes each week uh i just in fact tv podcast industries just played like all three of my voicemails for why uh the last man's episode two three and four uh in their latest episode or last week's are you loving that show i Steve? am i am really really enjoying <laughs> that show it's really novel and and great and well acted and oh, it is I'm so i'm so i'm so excited about that show it is it is and then i also send voicemails to strange indeed for midnight mass currently and i think they're going to start doing lock and key here in a couple weeks as well so i'm going to be busy with voicemails yes here in the next few weeks but uh, yeah that's where you can hear me awesome cool well i just want to thank everyone for listening and I want to thank Steve for covering for the past two weeks and doing such a great job. Oh, it was my pleasure. And I want to thank Wendy for being on this week, too. Anytime. It's always a pleasure to have Wendy and everybody, all our friends, come on just to have fun and just talk about these things. I just want to thank all your listeners for listening, and we'll talk to you soon. But I am Mark. I'm Steve. I'm Wendy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. You were I, uh, It's fine. It's fine. And we... <laughs> And we are Panels to Pixels, and we will see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>